senators in the upper chamber weighing in on the debate on the legal age of consent changing, the Bahamas Christian Council speaking out on victim blaming, and a protest being planned in front of the office of the Prime Minister. Good evening everyone, I'm Tyler Simonet with your JCN News for this Monday, April 4th. Much commentary continuing on controversial comments made by the National Security Minister last Thursday and Acting Director of Public Prosecutions early last week over the matter of consent to engage in sexual activity, as well as prison sentences for persons accused of unlawful sexual intercourse with minors, those who cannot give consent for the act. Statements in the upper chamber echoing comments made by the Deputy Prime Minister that the legal age of consent is being considered by the Cabinet of the Bahamas. Our Lizzie Bastian has the details in this report. The conversation on the age of consent and the sentencing of persons found guilty of unlawful sexual intercourse with underaged persons making its way in the upper chamber Monday morning with Senate President Lachelle Adderley calling for laws to be changed to protect minors, women and those that are vulnerable. The Senate President's comments were an echoing of Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper's comments in a Facebook post on Friday that the current discussion about the age of consent should be followed by action on the part of lawmakers. DBM Cooper noting that public discourse can be rocky, but it can often bring about change, adding that Cabinet is considering measures to bring about these changes, and they are long overdue. In a passionate statement in the Senate, President Adderley declares that this issue is not a political football and is beyond politics. I note that there are public awareness campaigns, policies, laws, advertisement on TV to safeguard and protect lobster, crawfish, grouper, flamingos, conch, and historical sites. All of that the chair supports. But we need to be just as open and comfortable discussing all that is needed to protect human lives, our nation's dollars. Every Bahamian woman, man, and minor should know that their safety and empowerment is of our utmost concern. And I say it again, this is not a political football. This is not about politics. Now, controversy surrounding the sentencing of four years of a 40-year-old man who, in a plea deal, pleaded guilty to unlawful sexual intercourse with a 14-year-old schoolgirl whom he also impregnated, ignited last week. There was public outcry over the incident, particularly following comments made by Acting Director of Public Prosecutions, Franklin Williams, who said that the country has a generation of highly sexualized young people, which the public saw as victim blaming. His comments were followed by National Security Minister Wayne Monroe's comments in defense of the ADPP. Minister Monroe also suggested that the sentence of the man was too severe. This too came with backlash from both the minister's colleagues, the official opposition, and the general public. President Adderley, in acknowledging the public outrage, says it's justified public outrage and sympathy for the victims. The Bellas, the Heavenlies, and Carissas all need protection. Minors, in particular, need the strongest form of protection from sexual predators, whether or not they consent. The law needs to protect the vulnerable even from themselves. Sexual predators should be locked behind bars for a significant period of time and fully rehabilitated. The Senate president noting that during the past few years, the visibility surrounding domestic violence, sexual assaults, and incidents of abuse against women and children in our country has substantially increased. Societal laws must reflect societal values. What we value, we protect. The vulnerable in our society, from Grand Bahama in the north to Inago in the south, need to feel protected, need to feel safe, and need to feel empowered. This is not about politics. 
Opposition Senator Michael Barnett Ellis also weighing in on the issue, agreeing with the Senate President's communication, adding that all governments must lead the way to change the mindset that results in discrimination. As you said, this is not party politics. This is not a political football. We all have a role to play. Discrimination against women cannot only come to the forefront when a politician or government official says something inappropriate or when they are trending online. Unfortunately, when the public attention moves on, so does the outcry. Collectively, we must actively continue to address discrimination against women. We must take deliberate action. It takes more than a tweet, a Facebook post, or even a press release. Senator Barnett Ellis contends that as a people, we must change the way we think and the way we behave. She adds that it is not enough to complain, but to make the Bahamas better, which is the goal. At the end of the day, solutions must be offered. She called for stiffer penalties for sexual offenses. Meantime, DPM Cooper has previously called for the legal age of consent to be increased to 18 years of age, and he says he still stands by that, adding that this will further protect minors and make clear that children who cannot drink alcohol, join law enforcement, open a bank account, stand before a court as an adult, or vote, for example, cannot reasonably consent to sex with an adult. The DPM contends that any law that suggests otherwise is out of step with the vast majority of those whom the law is supposed to serve believe. He says laws must change as the values of society evolve and mature. For JCN News, I'm Lissy Bastian. Senator Darren Henfield also the latest to speak out against victim blaming following the conviction of a 40-year-old man who was accused of having unlawful sex with a 14-year-old minor and impregnating her. In the upper chamber, Senator Henfield took a few minutes to speak of his fatherhood and grandfatherhood, mentioning he has an 8-year-old granddaughter who he could not imagine being violated at the age of 14 by a 40-year-old man, and he only received a slap on the wrist. I agree that this is no time to be judging the victims. There's no time to blame the victim. The victim, the law is as it is because society believes that the victim ought not to be placed in a position to, to give consent at that age. That's the, that's the reason why the law is there to protect the young people. With the Deputy Prime Minister revealing recently that a bill to amend the legal age of consent is presently before Cabinet, Bahamas Christian Council President Bishop Delton Fernander this morning weighs in on this potential change. Well, just hearing it this morning, obviously our meeting is at the end of the month to get consensus. I really can't speak on behalf of the Council. But, but for myself, if, if consent and adulthood and the ability to do certain things in our country is 18, I would think something as serious as sex should be 18 also. Uh, so as pastor, as a father of a daughter and a son, I would say 18 is an appropriate age uh, to give consent. Now Bishop Fernandez's comments come following the Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper having revealed that the government have tabled a bill to amend the Sexual Offences Act to ultimately have the legal age of consent in the country increase from 16 to 18 years old. The Christian Council president also spoke to the alleged victim blaming said to be derived from comments made last week by National Security Minister Wayne Monroe. Well, I was, I was off the island. Um, if I got the, the gist of the conversation, um, I really don't I look to those people to give me uh, my position on things. I really think as a father, uh, if my daughter has been assaulted, raped uh, and impregnated, uh, I expect the court to take its due course. Um, the time and sentencing, I need more information to know how did it get to four years because it really, really seems to be a short time for such a horrendous thing. Um, but as a parent and as a father, uh, I am one of those who believe that we should never blame the victim. We should protect the victim and really prosecute the per perpetrator. In his conversation with the press, Bishop Fernando addressed persons who commonly say that the Christian Council's voice in incidents like this one is often not heard. He notes that oftentimes a lot of the work the church does may not make the headlines. However, that does not mean that God's work is not being done. 
Bishop Fernandez sends a warning to persons who may echo those sentiments, noting that the proliferation of such a message may discourage someone in need of the church's assistance from seeking the help they need. In more news from the Senate, debate began in the upper chambers this morning for an amendment to the National Honors Act 2016. When this act was passed in 2016, it repealed the National Honors Act of 2010, as well as the National Heroes Act of 2007, and brought these two acts under one piece of legislation. Under this act is all the qualifications for how honors are bestowed upon heroes. Leader of Government Business in the House, Senator Michael Halkidis, led off the debate. And the promulgation, the institution of a system of national honors, Honor President, I believe, is just a continuation in the progress of us as a nation, where we have uh, political independence and we have all of our symbols and the next step of, along the way to have a system of national honors um, that people can strive for that can be um, respected. Um, and as you know, we currently have a dual system. We still retain the Queen's honours and we run along uh, um, parallel to that a system of, of our own national honours. And it is hoped that one day uh, we can move totally um, to a system of our national honours and we no longer have um, the the honors that are bestowed um, by the monarchy. Senator Halkidas noted that this debate comes at a timely moment as the recent royal visit by the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Prince William and Kate Middleton, has sparked back up the debate on if the Bahamas is ready to move away completely from the monarchy to become a republic. Even we find that in our system of national honors, it's a good thing to have your own national honors, the national hero, the order of the nation except the Order of the Bahamas, um, but there remains an affinity for some of those um, other honors um, that people strive for. But hopefully, as we continue to develop as a nation, we can move to the point where we have a single set of national honors that enjoy um, the respect and the desire of all those uh, concerned. The amendments here today, Madam President, that we are, are doing is are, and I'll, go, I'll just go through the amendments, to bring some, if we're correcting a, a few errors and um, allowing for the revocation of orders, and we're also expanding the categories of orders that are available. Senator Barry Griffin Jr. rose to second the amendment. He urges that we as a people must place more value on our local systems and develop a sense that foreign validation is unnecessary. So I am happy to support this piece of legislation that gives our national honor system more teeth. Specifically, as Minister Alkita said, it fleshes out the orders under the act and states that there is a hierarchy to the system and the orders go from highest to lowest. Order of National Hero, which is the highest honor any person can get. Order of the Nation, which is conferred on Governor Generals and Prime Ministers. Order of the Bahamas, the highest order most citizens can get, and it carries with it the title, the Right Honorable. Order of Excellence, Order of Distinction, Order of Merit, and Order of Lignum Vitae. The amendment establishes that there will be distinguished service medals for citizens of the Bahamas in recognition of exceptional service in public service or civil society. The bill was passed in its entirety this afternoon. On Tuesday morning, when Prime Minister Philip Davis and his cabinet members arrive at the office of the Prime Minister, they can expect to see a group of Bahamians led by leader of the Coalition of Independence, Lincoln Bain, as they seek an audience with the Prime Minister to request the issuance of one acre of Crown land for each organic Bahamian from the north to the south. But in the short term, those who are seeking land north of Carmichael Road West here on New Providence. On Monday morning, Mr. Bain explained the reasons behind Tuesday's planned activities at the OPM. 
uh, if you've ever applied for Crown Island and been ignored, we want the Prime Minister and the government to know that we're real people. You know, there's a concern for trees, but I think there's a bigger concern for humans. And so we need them to know that these are police officers uh, in the back there. These are defense force officers, custom officers, teachers, nurses. These are professionals who work in government ministries, the passport office, many other government ministries. These are real Bahamians who are not interested in building any kind of shanty towns, but they want to farm to feed themselves. These are Bahamians who are saying, listen, man, you've given the entire, uh, you've given acres and acres of land to other people. Why can't Bahamians get a small piece of that to do what they want to do? Mr. Bain agrees that many Bahamians who are wealthy today, including some past and present politicians, have used Crown land to enrich themselves, but have left the masses out of the big picture. Uh, uh, land reform can, can put Bahamians in a different situation. And if the government really cares about the people, they can do for the general public what they have done for themselves over the years. And, and, and that is they've empowered themselves by building uh, 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 homes or, uh, using Crown land, uh, they have built subdivision uh, using Crown land, and so they've been empowered. Now, uh, Bahamians just want a little piece of the rock so that they can be empowered, and that's why we're going out tomorrow to let the Prime Minister know, okay, we hear you, you have a concern about the forest, we have the same concern, um, we are there, we're willing to protect the forest, we are willing for, for persons to, 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 well, to tell persons to act responsibly, as it relates to this, and, and so we're willing to talk. When there was an issue uh, with the illegal immigrants uh, before, when they wanted to break down the shanty town, um, the government was negotiating with them. And so our thing is, how could you negotiate with the illegal immigrants but not negotiate or, or have a conversation with Bahamians? Mr. Bain says all Bahamians are invited to join their efforts as they march in front of the office of the Prime Minister beginning at 9.30 a.m. under the theme, This Land is Our Land. You're watching to ACN News. Stay with us.